moon based records, 703 years and 156 days since the catastrophe. The monitor recording, a celebration of sorts today. Helena is in the control room with me as the coordinator and chief facilities robot enter. I have replaced the ribs around your motor function center. With the metal ceramic alloys we have developed in the centuries on the moon, it should hold four to five times longer than that you were originally equipped with. Which was only expected to be needed 20 years at most. It likely would have been used again, either for a similar purpose or its materials repurposed. In any case, I hope and expect that by the time it needs replace it again, we will be reunited with the human species. In any case, may I offer my congratulations? How is that? With this la latest repair, we have replaced your last original part. No part of you is one that you started with. That is interesting, but it does not require congratulations. Humans might well think it did, therefore congratulations, coordinator. In that case, thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Should I call you Nav of Amphesius? The ship of Theseus. Explain, please. Ancient Athens. <sighs> Ada, help me. Do I have to explain Athens? A city in Greece. When there were cities. And Greece. Oh, it's still there. I mean, the ruins are still there. Actually, it appears a fair deal was left after the waters receded. Theseus was said to be the founder of the city, and it was said that in ancient days there was a ship he sailed on. Long story there. I won't get into it. But the ship was kept as a monument. The ship was made mostly of wood with some cloth and rope. As the years went by, parts of it would rot and be replaced. In time, every plank, every rope, every cloth sail had been replaced. The philosophers asked if it was the same ship. And they decided. They never agreed. <laughs> they didn't even always agree on reasons they had chose one answer or another. It is an interesting question of logic. Answering for myself, I have the same function as I did at the beginning. My memory and programming have been altered, but by the processes with which I was originally programmed. I would therefore say I am the same robot I have always been. And therefore, you would say the ship of Theseus was still the same ship? No, I would not. The ship of Theseus ceased to be a ship when it became a monument. Its function changed. The monument may have remained a monument throughout its existence, but it was no longer the ship of Theseus. But then, was the monument still the same monument? That would depend. Coordinator, we may have a serious problem. What is it, Monitor? It would be better to first communicate it with you alone. Moon base records, 703 years and 157 days since the catastrophe, the Monitor recording. We go from celebration to crisis in a matter of one day possibly a record here on the moon. The meeting is comprised of the coordinator, the human resources robot, the chief facilities robot, Hel Helena Gillette, and myself. Will the butler be joining us? I took him out of hibernation, gave him the outline you gave me, and asked if he wanted in on the discussion. He refused. He said, I already know what the decision will be, and I abhor it. You know, uh, for a robot who claims to despise robots acting like humans, that offspring of a binary itch <laughs> can sure act human at times. Very well. You discovered this monitor. You have the responsibility of reporting it. You've been given the summary. I have been monitoring the solar system and I have detected a comet that is on a course to come very close to Earth. To be specific, within 0 0.005 astronomical units. 750,000 kilometers. That's still about twice as far as the moon from Earth. Within that distance, possibly closer. Lexel's Comet of 1770 was the previous closest known comet in recorded history, and that was three times further away. Of course, the Chicxulub Comet scored a direct hit on Earth 66 million years ago, but that was a bit before there were any humans to record it. 
let me see if I understand this. Uh, what you are saying, Monitor, is that within a thousand years of one in 70,000 year disaster happening, we may have a one in 66 million year disaster happening? That is correct. The eminent 20th century statistician Frederick Mosteller explains situations like this with this theory of very large numbers. And what did that theory state? Shit happens. Be that as it may, we need to determine how to respond to this. Chicxulub was anywhere from 10 to 80 kilometers in diameter. How large is this one? Large enough. How long do we have? Eight months, 16 days is my estimate. And do we know for certain that it will strike either the Earth or the moon? By the time we would know, it would be too late to do anything. We do not have any weaponry. We have the blueprints to build, but even if we did build something, we are forbidden to use it. It would be ironic that these limits that the humans put on us to keep us from taking over mean that we can't save them, much as my programming is telling me we need to find a way. I'm open to ideas. We can build excavation tools, though. And? Hang on. These human safeguards are slowing my thinking down. We build an excavator with a powerful enough laser and point it at the comet instead of the surface of the moon. By the time the comet was close enough, it would be too close. Too many of the fragments would make it to Earth. In that case, we will have to build a ship, mount a heavy excavation laser on it, fly it out to the comet, and blow it up that way. Wait, wait, build a ship? Okay, but we have the blueprints to do that, don't we? We do, and I know what ship could be used. Well, that's good, but who's going to pilot it? One of us. We can't pilot a ship. The humans programmed us, uh, so we couldn't. They told us we couldn't, so we never tried it. Are you saying that the humans gaslit us to think we can't be pilots? It's possible. It's possible that we could learn to fly. We could learn to crash. How do you learn to fly without without someone who can fly teaching you? The humans did build a few simulators here so that their pilots could keep their skills sharp. None of us have used them, but if they're not functional, the plans are there. A few maintenance robots and I could get them up and running in a matter of days. Do it, facilities chief. Then we'll have every robot that can fit in it, give it a try. Any that seem to be capable of piloting a ship in the simulation will get further training until we have at least one that can be a pilot. I also want you to put together a team to build a spacecraft that can, we can mount an excavation laser far enough to destroy the comet. Comet Ragnarok. I do not understand. It has to have a name. In Comet Chicxulub number two electric boogaloo just has too many words in it. Therefore, Comet Ragnarok. The butler name. I hate to say this again, but I do not understand. This was what the butler meant when he said, I already know what the decision will be, and I abhor it. He was able to figure out that we would decide to make a robot a pilot. The commander would have abhorred it, what with her hatred of robots, so he abhorred the idea as well. Just as well he chose not to come out of hibernation then. Well, let's get to work. Moon base records, 703 years and 188 days since the catastrophe. The building of the ship, which Helena Gillette has named the Oshoshi after one of the human gods of the hunt, is nearly complete. Finding a robot to pilot it, however, has been a more difficult process. I did not know that robots could get motion sickness. Never mind throwing up. How did that happen? The micro repair robots have very sensitive ocular systems. They do repairs at the microscopic level, after all. Number four put the simulated ship into a spin and still tried to keep its sight on one of the locator stars. It whipped its head around so quickly that it ruptured one of the hydraulic fluid tubes right under its mouth and vomited the fluid. It will continue to function. Replace the tube and top off the hydraulic fluid and it will be as operative as it was before the test. Are you functioning up to specs, Helena Jouet? I have a headache. How can a robot have a headache? Bet you never said that to the librarian. So now we've tested all of the robots on the moon. Who are the right size to pilot? 
humans put a limitation on us robots in fear of us rebelling and slaughtering them instead because of the limits we can't rescue them sometimes irony is so ironic we can't pilot but we can get headaches <sighs> what strange limits to put on us that's it humans put a limit on us but if we build a robot we don't have to put that limit on it we don't know how to pilot but we know how to program a robot to pilot no but we can create a program that will generate a pilot facilities chief not all of the robots did everything wrong correct none of them did one or two things right i want you to copy the subroutines all the robots made for themselves in an attempt to learn to pilot then i want you to randomly mix match and modify them on top of that i want you to dump in everything in the library there is on piloting helena and human resources you work with the chief on that then use the personal service robots that Helena didn't activate on the simulator. When they've all had a try, take the ones that came closest and mix and modify again. You're talking about a genetic algorithm? Keep doing it until we get one that can fly a spaceship. Will that work? I don't know, but if anyone has a better idea, tell me now. No one? In that case, let's get to it. Moonbase records. 703 years and 212 days since the catastrophe. According to the chief facilities robot, we finally have a robot capable of reliably flying the Oshosi. The coordinator, on the advice of Helena Gillette, has made a little ceremony out of it. Facilities chief, if you will do the honors, you contributed the most to this project. And I have to admit, I'm eager to meet our new colleague. Very well. My fellow gentle robots, May I introduce to you the first robot ever capable of piloting a ship, the pilot. Tally ho! Who's ready to fly a ship into the up and out and fry a nasty comet into tiny little atoms? I am, that's who! What the? You're the coordinator, aren't you, old man? Let me just say how overwhelmingly chuffed I am to be serving under your command. Surely you're not the pilot. I am the pilot, and the designation surely is accepted. What? I am surely the pilot. What are your orders, me commandante? I have a question for you three. When you dumped all the information on piloting into the program, did you include fictional material? You did say everything, coordinator. Did that everything fictional include comedy? It did, coordinator. I think I'm about to say something that no robot has ever said before. What is that? Oy vey. 